car knock nearby on the way for it just pops up and knock? It's back that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are these are your guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're, and this is what you do for the end. You kind of put this. Well, we've never done a documentary of what how Def Con happens. And people, have made, and since it's our 20th anniversary, I just decided to fund it and just give it away to the whole community. We're going to try to enter into some film festivals and documentary festivals, and we're going to give it to the community for free. And it's just really about this whole thing. I have over almost 300 volunteers helping run it. There's no, yeah, and they're so it's a it's a community effort. I can't do it alone. And we right, charge so hard to talk and, and film and <laughs> carry it. Well, and we charge so little, we could never afford to run it commercially. So it has to be run by volunteers to be accessible to everyone. And so these people put in so much time. We want to acknowledge them, but also a lot of people don't know how much work and what everybody does. So this is a way of acknowledging everybody and answering a lot of questions. Yeah. Oh, there you go. This way. This way. Yeah. I think it was the, the year when I was at the Aladdin and we'd forgotten to uh, um, sort of clean up our room or we didn't think that the maid was going to show up as early as they did. And, uh, you know, we'd gone off to breakfast and we came back and the maid had been in the room and cleaned the room and organized all of the drugs. <laughs> so there was like a little pile of acid and a little pile of ecstasy and some other pills. <laughs> and it was, they're all nice, neat little piles. I was like, huh, <laughs> well, I guess things are different in Las Vegas. This is my first DEF CON badge. I went on the DEF CON website and I started going through all of the uh, videos that they had for DEF CON 19. And I started looking at that and going, oh, this is really cool. 20th DEF CON, been wanting to do it for years. And uh, it was just one of those things that just sort of lined up, all the, all the moons lined up perfectly. Uh, definitely heard a lot about the con. It's uh, it's somewhat affordable con, and there's lots of technical discussions. A whole bunch of really smart people that probably know more than I do, most of them. So I hope to learn something. You know, the opportunity to hang out with those people that really know what's going on was, you know, too enticing to, to miss out on. And I thought this would be an amazing place to just meet and really intelligent people. So now I'm here, and I'm really excited. Uh, to meet a lot of interesting people and learn a lot, have a lot of fun at once. <laughs> it's kind of you know a big congregation where people uh, that pretty much live anonymously online get to actually um, socialize in person and kind of uh, 
not have to worry about as much, you know, revealing their identity. Well, I've read all kinds of dire warnings about using any th anything here that's potentially hackable, and nearly anything's hackable, so... I was told to take the battery out of my phone. Just <laughs> you know, I've got a checklist sort of in my mind. You know, kilt, colored hair, drinking before 10 a.m. I haven't seen quite just yet. Every single device in the world has some kind of computer in it, and they all have vulnerabilities in one way or another, and this is an information of what those vulnerabilities could be and how to fix them and make them better and improve it for the future. Are you the teacher? Yes. You are the teacher? Yeah. And this is your first DEF CON? Yes. And you thought to take a pack of neophyte students into Las Vegas to go to a hacking conference? Yes. Yes. Do you have tenure? Rule number one, follow the three, two, one rule daily. And please bear in mind these are minimums. At a minimum, three hours of sleep, two meals, one shower. <laughs> By tomorrow afternoon, the pungent and stank aroma of many DEF CON attendees will waft through the air and hit you like a Mack truck. So remember, you plus deodorant equals everybody wins. Most DEF CON talks start with a, a great deal of alcohol and end with a great deal of alcohol. At least the good ones that I've noticed. The aircraft uh, tracking stuff came out of the, the fact that I bought an app for a couple of bucks that allowed me to, to point my, my cell phone at the uh, contrail, look at the information that was uh, for that particular flight was overlaid on the, the camera. As I started digging, I found more and more issues. You know, just out of my own curiosity, I was, how does this work? I found all these issues and it got really scary because I, I speak a lot and I go to uh, a whole bunch of conferences. You know, this stuff can start getting really dangerous. So I was thinking, okay, this, even if I don't have all the answers, I need to get this answer out. Really, I've, I've done enough of these things and know the, the crowd that it, I don't get, you know, jitters or nerves or anything like that. Just kind of you know running through some of the slides and talk some of the, the jokes I may have constructed for a particular slide or, or a particular moment. But mostly it's just okay. Does my laptop work? You know, are the slides up? Does the projector work? Yep. Okay. All good. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, um, generally what I say is that when I get bored, bad things happen. For, you know, at the Las Vegas airport here, you've got a flight landing every 90 seconds. That's an awful lot of metal, money, people moving around. How does this all work? How does this all fit together? You, know, you always hear about air traffic control, but does anybody really know how it works anymore? I think that the audience is looking to learn something new. They're looking for an entertaining discussion on interesting technologies that at the end of the day are kind of important. So increasingly my talks have gone into why is the internet such an insecure place? What do we have to do? Not in theory, not to satisfy academic stuff, but like real world, what do we need to change to make this thing secure? All year, all my best research comes here. All year I work on, you know, what am I going to bring to DEF CON for the next year? What am I going to do for this particular event? Because it's where it began for me. My career started because I started speaking out here in Vegas and started coming out to DEF CON and showing off these toys. I'll be honest, a lot of my talks have had nothing to do with security. Just like, yo, look what I can make that thing do. The presentation was just facilitating you know, uh, a dialogue with this industry because unfortunately when something like, you know, a major vulnerability in air traffic control, there's no phone number to call in for that and say, hey, you know, can we talk about this? Uh, you know, 
Um, that doesn't exist. It was the first time I dealt with something that was was really serious. The entire talk was theory. I, I had no facilities to actually test anything, you know, on a in a real world scenario because obviously I don't want to be going with a plane while in flight. My talks are stories, and that's the one thing that I advise everyone else giving a speech. You're telling a story to your friends about some cool stuff. I have hundreds of hours of research that I have to tie together into a coherent explanation of the world. I was expecting a response, and oh boy, did I get it. I was talking to people from you know, major airlines, people working for ma uh, airplane manufacturers, air traffic controllers, trainers. I've got a pocket full of business cards after this that I have to go through. So this was sort of me loudly knocking on the door and saying, you might have a problem here, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Over the years, I've gotten relatively high profile and uh, uh, I am very happy and honored for all the obligations that come along with uh, uh, being a high profile individual, but uh, I do miss being able to just wander through the crowds and see cool stuff and watch cool talks. You know, I got a lot of stuff I've got to do. There's a lot of obligations. I'm not complaining. This is a tremendous amount of fun that I get to have, you know, show them, build all these crazy toys and fill Penn and Teller and show them off. Um, the best moment for me at DEF CON is always going to be at 4 in the morning when someone's showing off some really silly stunt that they built. And maybe it's good or maybe it's not, but man, they love it and they're enjoying talking about it. Go see, make sure, you know, Richard Theme's in there for your, like, the, the cryptozoologist of the DEF CON world. Always worth seeing Richard Theme. I felt more at home where I didn't have to explain anything to anybody than any other context I'd ever been in. Uh, real hackers are incredible. They take nothing for granted, and they look at things to see how they can be combined to make something new. And, and hackers really have an interesting, innovative, creative way, the best of them, uh, of looking at all sorts of problems uh, that a normal person wouldn't know how to do and being fearless in the face of ambiguity, holding multiple representations of reality simultaneously in your mind, even though they may be contradictory and conflicting, and holding them there lightly while you explore which ones are a best fit for now to the sensory data coming into society. So, you know, Feynman, great physicist, he said, the interesting fact is the anomalous fact. Emphasize both fact and anomaly, because it says there's a whole cornerstone here of another way of looking at things that we're missing. Well, that's what hackers are looking for, and that's why I've taken to it so, because the edge where new realities are appearing and normals don't see them at first, but hackers are looking for them. They're kind of the little homo nucleus in, inside the machine. When I come here, I don't have to explain anything to anybody. I don't have to back up and explain my point of view or my point of reference or why I said what I said or what was ironic or, or what was meant straight up because people just kind of get it. And that's a terrific thing. We spent a lot of time uh, over the last year setting up for this uh, convention. It is truly a labor of love. We're all volunteers. We don't do this for glory. We don't do this for anything other than we want you guys to have a good time here.
people missed a few years, their differences between their experiences is going to be pretty radically different. DEF CON 1 was um, around 100 people, and um, we expect roughly 15,000 uh, for DEF CON 20. We just, we, we work nonstop. I haven't seen 4th of July in, in like seven years. It, it's crazy that DEF CON, as, as you can label it as a hobby, takes so much time uh, because it seems like pretty much from the moment DEF CON ends until the time that we're spinning it up again, we're busy. You know, technically I retired two years ago, um, but I can't give it up because it's such a part of me. I'm giving back to the same culture that spawned me. DEF CON for the last 10 years especially has been a very big part of my life. It consumes most of my free time. DEF CON starts for me the day after DEF CON is over for the next year. A lot of people who are hardcore DEF CON attendees or staff, they negotiate when they change jobs. That's fine, everything's good, but I need to take, you know, two weeks off. I never thought that my party would be a job employment <laughs> prerequisite. I am not kidding. I am expecting another well-orchestrated, well-oiled machine coming together and producing this amazing gathering of geeks. No kidding. It's what we do. We come together and we do the hell out of it. And I expect it to happen this year.